uh, had this elaborate, uh, elaborate message set up. But um, I, I think uh, that um, I feel like I can just go right into it. Um, for those of you who do not know me or just walk in, my name uh, is Harrell uh, 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 Huntley, and I have been married for about eight years, and my wife, Kimmy, is right there. Give her a hand. We have a four-year-old son, um, five now, because his birthday was Friday. I heard a person say five, like, okay, yeah, y'all know my son's birthday, all right. We have a five-year-old, uh, his name is Roman, um, and he's the sweetest kid, and I'm going to just leave it there, okay? Um, no, he, he is a great kid, and, um, and we are so thankful that he is in our lives. We have been, uh, this is our second U City night. How y'all feel about it, man? Thank y'all. Man, uh, uh, I'm so excited. This is not our lunch. Um, I, <laughs> I was speaking with, with somebody, and they was like, oh, yeah, this is our lunch. No, we haven't launched as a church uh, yet, and we are hoping that there are hearts in this room that are like, you know, we will launch with you. Um, and so that is our hope, but if not, that is okay. Um, I just want to thank Mosaic as well, church, for letting us have their spot for this month. This is the second out of four, and so, and so we have another opportunity. Next week is our third U-City night. And, uh, and again, U-City is a multi-ethnic church, and it's a safe space. For those who are maybe over the church thing, I don't, man, I don't know, COVID happened, and you were at home, Watching, so I don't need to step back in the church, or the, or you experience church hurt, or uh, you just don't know Jesus. This is a safe space for you, and we definitely want you to feel that. And so, um, know that, know that we want your unpolished and unprocessed self, and we really do mean that. And so, thank you for coming again. Um, and so, last week we talked about. Um, uh, being poor in spirit, and, and that may sound really abstract, right? So what does that mean? Um, but last, we, we basically talked about how we need God, and God wants us. And that is the good news, is that, that it wins on both sides, on both ends. We need God, and God actually wants us. And a lot of times, we don't know how much we need God because we are living uh, this life uh, that we don't think how much oh, oh, we need God because we are maybe in this pattern, this routine that we just don't think about. But this very next breath that I took to say something, God gave it to me. And that's how much we need God. This week, um, uh, in our planting season series, somebody say, yell out, hey, it's planting season. Amen. All right, thank you. And for the next maybe 15 minutes, um, I want to talk about um, the third beatitude, and I will explain what a beatitude it is, but the third beatitude, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now, the whole reason why we are off the stage this week, and, and I'm staying, standing right here because this is more our vibe. Like, we love human-to-human -human contact right here, all right? The stage felt a little um, thrownish for me. And so I am on the floor, okay, with you all because the same issues that you deal with, I deal with, and I will be vulnerable about my issues, and we hope that you can, too. Also, what has changed from last night? The house lights are on. You want to know why? Because half the room fell asleep. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if y'all <laughs> thought it was, like, this message is, what? But, man, y'all were asleep. Y'all were asleep, man, and... Uh, 
and y'all hurt my feelings. And so what I, what I would like is if y'all fall asleep tonight, everybody else can see you falling asleep too. It's called accountability. And so that, <laughs> that is really why the house, house lights are on. I'm not lying. That is because <laughs> people fell asleep on me. Um, <laughs> where was I? Oh, <laughs> there we go. Um, as you can tell, we are a family here. We don't like do the, the professional thing really well. Um, we fail at it. And so, <laughs> and so you get me. And so, um, and so, uh, we, um, are in our planting season series. And tonight I have no notes because I really would love the Holy Spirit just to lead, uh, me in this. Um, and so, um, so Matthew 5 and 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. What I want uh, to talk about is being planted, period. And if I were to title this message, which I'm going to, you know, preachers say that. If, if I were to title this message as if they not titling it when they said it, you titled in the message. Is, is I would say, don't move. And don't fake it. Don't move and don't fake it. So being planted, a plant being planted cannot move unless we uproot it, right? A plant being planted, that is how it survives, it stays. And it hopes and expects the, the things around it to help it to nourish it, to make it grow. That is what a plant does. And I will not lie, I had a whole message script out, and then I did it, and then I was like, ah, this, this ain't it, and I got some help. And I was like, hey, you know what? This ain't it, but God showed me what this verse meant. And when he did, I, I was... it. It really, it really helped me. It really did. And, and I'm being really honest. It rekindled something about the Jesus that I followed. Like it, it, it put him in the light that I'm like, oh, I forgot you were like this, Jesus. I forgot you were so loving. I forgot you loved us. I forgot that you don't abandon us. I forgot that you are with me. All the time. And so, I'm going to see if I can make this work. I just thought of this, okay? So, if it fails, uh, we have this thing with uh, U City. It's called freedom to fail. So, if it fails, it just fails, okay? Just to let y'all know. Has anybody, been, um, has anybody been camping or hiking before and have encountered a bear? <laughs> Somebody said, nope. You have, Austin? Thank you, man. You have, so, so um, have you encountered an aggressive bear or was uh, and the bear just curious? No, nobody? You know what? I love hiking. I love camping. But here's, here's the thing. Um, I haven't been in a while because the guys I ask to go camping with me always say no. And they're black, so maybe that's... <laughs> Maybe that's it. All of my white homies, you know, or non-black homies, they were like, we in there. And I'm like, bet, because I feel safe with y'all. But, but, <laughs> but my black friends are like, nah, so like, so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, is camping though? Like, you use a cabin? <laughs> is that the type of camping? No, that's not camping. That is not camping. That is glamping or staying in a hotel. What, what in the world? That is not camping. I love camping. More importantly, I love going with people who really know how to camp. <laughs> and so I have never en encountered a bear while I was camping or hiking. Here's the thing. I've always wanted to. I know. I Asked ask, uh, my wife, she was like, I'm like, if we are hiking in the mountains, I'm looking for a bear. 
Come on, let me meet you. Come get some. I want a story when I leave. I can tell everybody, I fought this bear and I won. That's a story I want. So, and I can use it in one of my messages. No, no, but this is the truth. This is the truth. Though I, I did. I, I've always wanted us to uh, encounter a bear. But like, like, like a puppy bear, though. <laughs> not, not a, uh, not a full-grown man bear, but like a, a puppy bear, you know? You know, when I can bend down the pet, you know? So, oh, c- cute puppy bear. Uh, they're called cubs, right? I call them puppy bears. Um, puppy bear, good puppy bear. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. I, I never want a, just to meet an aggressive bear. And I was just thinking in my head, when you meet an aggressive bear, an aggressive bear approaches you, what should you do? So I Googled it. I said, if, if an aggressive bear wants some with me, what should I do? That's what I asked Google. <laughs> and I learned these two things, right? These two things that it says do. It says, if a bear approaches you aggressively, you move away slowly, right? And the second thing that you do is that you appear to be bigger. You appear to be something you're not to the bear. But this beatitude says different. In this, when Jesus is saying this, Jesus is telling a certain type of people to don't move and don't fake it. And I will show you how. Uh, um, Jesus, this is extraordinary. I have to go back to this story. Jesus uh, was fasting for 40 days. And if you heard this last week, uh, I'm sorry. But Jesus was fasting for 40 days. And Jesus uh, then encountered Satan after he fasted. Satan was like, if you are God, if you are so powerful, you should do these things. And, and Jesus is like, no. And so Jesus overcame that. And then he, he goes to spread this good news after that. And the good news was this. The kingdom of God is here. It's here. Right? And I wonder, as he's saying that, does people like know what he was actually saying? That this kingdom of God, this abstract thing, this kingdom of God is here? And Jesus was, was sharing with that. And so the kingdom of God The kingdom of God is this. Wherever you let God govern, that is the kingdom of God. Wherever you let God govern in your life, the kingdom of God, that is the kingdom of God. And guess what? The kingdom of God is exceptionally good. It's great. It is something that you can't even imagine. The kingdom of God is the opposite of this earth. The kingdom of God is the opposite of what we endure in life. Now, how many of you are tired of one bad thing happening after another? Like, man, anxiety is up. My wife is a counselor and she's booked up. And I can say that, right? I can say that? Okay. I didn't know if that was confidential. But she's booked up, right? Which is good for our finances, but it's not, but that's not good, right? It, it, she's because people are suffering. But Jesus is like, hey, I have the opposite for you. The kingdom of God is here and this kingdom of God brings actual healing it brings wealth it brings peace it rivals anxiety and fear this kingdom of God is fantastic and it's here and you can have it right now and so Jesus goes and Jesus is healing people Dave 
uh, you're healed. Dave's healed. Micah, uh, you're healed. Emotionally para- paralyzed people, Jesus is like using his feet and kicking them and say, healed. You know, or they're doing a gun thing, healed. <laughs> Jesus is, is healing people. And so because of this, he is, is drawing a huge crowd. Now, I'm saying all this again because it's really important. I, I said this last week. He is drawing a huge crowd, right? And so Jesus leaves and goes on a mountain so that he can speak to this type of people. And Jesus says this, blessed are the poor in spirit, for there's the kingdom of heaven. And then he says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. I said that the kingdom of God is the opposite of this earth. It's the exact opposite of this earth. Jesus is saying, hey, you may be angry right now, but the kingdom of God brings happiness. You may be sad now, but the kingdom of God brings happiness. You may be broke now, but you are wealthy in my kingdom. Right? Jesus says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. What does this word meek meek mean? This word meek means gentle. This word meek, meek means under the radar. This word meek means overlooked. This word meek means not enough. Jesus says supreme blessings. That's what blessed means. Supreme, huge blessings. Like, I'm short, so. Like huge blessings for the ones who are overlooked. Jesus says, in my kingdom those who are overlooked are looked upon. Jesus says, in my kingdom, those who aren't being paid attention to or love are supremely loved. Jesus is speaking, this is important, Jesus is speaking to a certain people group, right? So Jesus healed people, and so that means the people who follow him to the mountain needed healing. Jesus attracted the poor. Jesus attracted the the people who were overlooked. Jesus attracted the people who were weak. Jesus attracted the people who stutter. Jesus, those are the type of people that Jesus was speaking to. And Jesus says, I know that you are overlooked. And he's told them right where they are. Jesus said, I have hope for you. I have really good news for those of you who are at your job. Blessed are you who are overlooked. For you shall inherit the entire earth. Maybe those who who are single And feel like they are overlooked. And they want to be married. And Jesus says, blessed are the overlooked. The lonely maybe. For you shall have everything from me. Jesus is speaking to those people who feel behind in life. Those who have been divorced. Those who have a sickness. Those who have a disease, those who are outcasts, Jesus says, supreme blessings, the most blessings to you. And so the reason why I titled this message, Don't Move and Don't Fake It, because of the second part of this. It says, for they shall inherit the earth. Jesus was speaking to people who could not do anything for themselves. They were outcasts. And Jesus says, you will inherit the earth. Now, I told you that the kingdom of God is the opposite of this world, right? And so what I feel like Jesus was saying 
It's those who are over, overlooked, those who don't feel like enough in certain areas. Stay there. Don't move. Don't move. You're fine. You're good. You're good. You're good. You don't have to work harder. You don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to prove your value or look for your value somewhere else. Jesus says, don't move because the kingdom of God is coming and the kingdom of God is opposite of this earth. So watch me flip it on his head. Watch me flip it on his head. And those who weren't loved are loved. Those who weren't valued are now valued. Those who are last are now first. Watch me flip it on his head. Jesus says, good news. I know you're not. I know you feel like you are not enough. But watch me flip it on his head. In my kingdom, you are more than enough. You didn't even have to do anything. That's why you don't have to fake it now. Because this is a promise. That's why you don't have to show yourself strong all the time. Because this is a promise. That's why you don't have to be someone that you're not. Because this is a promise. Jesus has our back. And if you would just, just, just not move, be real, be honest with yourself, watch me bring the kingdom of God down and let you inherit it. Turn it upside down. And where you feel last, you are now first in my kingdom. Where you feel not enough, you are more than enough in my kingdom. And the kingdom of God, this, this abstract realm that we don't fully understand, reigns supreme. It is worth more, it is bigger. It is better than what we experience now. And you can have peace now. The kingdom of God in your heart. The Beatitudes is is a promise. For those who are overlooked. For those who are poor in spirit. I have a, a shared challenge. If you could throw it up. It's really simple, but maybe a, a little difficult. A lot of us, all of us in here are faking something. You're faking your strength, your emotions. Hey, I feel this way, but nah, you know. You can find yourself in the people that Jesus was talking to. And guess what? The rich people, they more than likely weren't there listening to Jesus because they feel like they have it all. But they're faking something too. Everybody should have been there hearing this message. No one is inexcusable. No one. So, if you feel if you don't feel love, if you don't feel enough, like enough, 
in a specific area your whole life if you don't feel if you feel just overlooked and not valued I get it I've been passed over a lot of positions have passed over me because I stutter for a long time I was mad at God and I felt like I should prove myself so I worked harder I became louder I became in people's face saying hey look at me I'm here why am I being looked over until I realized what this meant that you don't have to do all that I have something for you if you would just trust me just rock with me just stay still don't move don't fake it blessed are the meek for they shall 